Amen. Good evening, church. Man, I hope this, uh, this finds you well. Amen. Great service this morning. Great message and challenge from the Word of God from Brian. It's just been an awesome, awesome day. I'm looking at those pictures up there, and I see that, that White House. That was, well, of course, that's the mission station. Go back uh, video here. But anyway, that was a, a house that we built for the women, the pastor's wives, uh, to come in. That house in the back and over to the left, you see the back end of the Bible Institute, North Star Bible Institute. Now, if you can imagine, okay, many, many years ago, uh, a missionary going from America to Zambia, Africa for the first time, and Becky and I and Dennis Anderson and Jim Minkoff took a taxi from Indola to go out to visit this place called Kafulafuta. And I remember the 18-mile dirt road, you know, the potholes. You know, when you see ears sticking out of a pothole in Zambia, it's not a rabbit. It's a giraffe, okay? That's how deep the potholes are. So we're up and down, and we're going everywhere. Finally, we get to the turnoff to go to Kafulafuta. Well, unfortunately, there's no street signs. There's just a trail about this wide. It's just a walking trail for six miles, and those of you that have visited back in 2003, you know we got a road now. But can you imagine taking a taxi for the first time and the brush literally on the front of that taxi going down that little trail to about 30 buildings that were dilapidated and falling down? Well, let me go back. Let's go to the history of the Kafulafuta Baptist Mission. But before we do, I'd like to pray, if I could. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We continue. What a name <laughs> that is above all names, King Jesus. Thank you so much. God, get the honor, get the glory from what is being said tonight. Lord, your providential hand has been on this place, the people. Lord, the plan that you've had, God, this has all been because of you and for your glory. And I thank you for that, God. I thank you for all the people that have been involved, that have locked arms and locked hands and went for the glory of God. And so, Lord, bless this night, bless this church, bless, God, as only you can do your word. In Jesus' name, amen. In 1986, there was a man who came to our church at First Bible Baptist Church in Rochester, New York, I had retired from professional baseball in 1984. I was teaching at our Christian school up there. I was attending our Bible Institute. And every Wednesday night, we had missionaries that would come in and present the field. Dr. Richard Vick was a, a person who had been a missionary for many years in the country of Ethiopia. And he came that night and he presented the need for missionaries to come into sub-Sahara Africa and especially emphasis on Zambia because Zambia had no independent Baptist missionaries in that country. They had a lot of missionaries from Australia, from different parts of the world, but there were no independent Bible Baptist missionaries in that country at that time. And he came to FBBC, he presented the needs, and again, after that service, Dennis Anderson, who was my bus pastor, he went down one aisle and surrendered to go to Zambia, Africa, as I was going down the other aisle to surrender to go to Zambia, Africa. But Dennis stood up and told everybody, God had just called us to Africa. And so I looked over to him and I go, wow. He made it public. Wow, God, you must have been speaking so loud in the service that I overheard you talking to Dennis. <laughs> so I went back and sat down. I didn't say anything. I was scared to death because once you uh, say it publicly, you got to do it, right? And so I was a little scared and hesitant. And so I went back and, uh, again, Dennis made that commitment with Sue and the kids, and they began to go on deputation. Now, I knew what the Lord was doing in my heart. I knew that. I knew he wanted me to go, but I was scared to death. 
A few months went by. Dennis and Sue uh, were preparing with Dr. Vic to go over. There was a man in our church by the name of Richard Hughes. We call him Dick Hughes. That was his man. Dick and Mama or Joan Hughes. And they were a business couple. They loved the Lord. They were very, very wealthy people. Uh, they wanted to go on a trip to Zambia with Dr. Vic and Dennis. So they went over there and to check out the field. And as they came back, and as Dennis was getting ready to uh, go over, the Lord once again moved on my heart in a service, much like we're having tonight, where the missionary was showing his slides. And I went forward when Tommy Tillman was in our church that night, weeping and crying during his slide presentation. Don't remember a thing he preached on other than what God was doing in my heart that night. And so I surrendered to go to Zambia, Africa with Dennis, with Dr. Vic and his team and everything. And so we had a team. And in the meantime, Dick Hughes had visited the place and they had seen the mission station and all of that. And so Dick wanted to hire a builder to come over and rebuild this mission station in the bush. And he hired a fellow by the name of Jim Minkoff, his wife Virginia, they had two kids. And so they would join us in helping build or rebuild the old mission station at Kafulafuta Baptist Mission. This mission was founded in 1905 by the South African Baptist Missionary Society of Northern Rhodesia under a man by the name of Clement Doak. Clement Doak is the one that came in 1905, founded it. He's the one that took the Lamba language and put it into, uh, from English into Lamba and translated the Bible for the Ishi Lamba people. After he passed away from malaria, his uh, daughter, excuse me, sister, uh, Olive Doak, came and began to continue the work that her brother had started, and she also died there at the mission. While she was there, I've heard from many of the uh, early men that we trained how she would say, one day there's going to be men that are going to be here. There are going to be people that are going to be here that are going to know the Bible. And they're going to bring you the truth. She said, I don't know a lot about the Bible, but I can teach you English. I can teach you how to read. I can teach you certain things, and I'll do that. But one day, there'll be men that will bring the Bible to this place. So before the country became Zambia in 1964, the country was called, like I said, Northern Rhodesia. It was established by Great Britain. Most of the missions, most of the schools there were built by the South Africans. Well, when the country won its independence in 1964, okay, the president kicked out all the South Africans, made them leave the country. You say, why did they do that? Apartheid was going on in South Africa. White rule, blacks had no vote in South Africa. That was until 1990. Hello, you talk about racism, we talk about that. What about over there during that time? Nelson Mandela got released, okay? So we actually went into Zambia when apartheid was still going on in South Africa. So when we arrived, the people who assisted us in getting in the country was really a miracle. God prepared a place, God prepared a people, and they happened to be educated and trained at Kafulafuta. Baptist Mission. Uh, and so right away, we were basically given the property at Kafulafuta and had the right to what we call rebuild the mission station. Uh, Dick Hughes took a very big interest in this. And what he did was he bought all kinds of materials, all kinds of building materials from saws to nails to you name it, and shipped over 12 40-foot containers so when you ship over one container, that's $17,000. Times that by 12. And then add up all the material that went into every one of those containers from the saws to you name it, to the building supplies, to the refrigerators, to the, the vehicles that he put on there and everything else that was on the container along with Bibles and tracts and medicines and you name it, it came over. And so again, that helped us what? get a good name within the government of Zambia, basically put a feather in our cap. He also paid the Minkoff's monthly salary. You see, Jim Minkoff was a builder. 
He used to work with Wycliffe Bible translators in the jungle of Brazil, and they would send him down, and he would look at the material, and he goes, okay, we're going to build this mission station. So Brother Hughes shipped him over to look at what we had, and he's the one that, how do you say, organized and put everything together and hired all the workers around Kafulafuta to build those homes that you guys have stayed in, those of you that have visited us and the Bible Institute. And again, all the additions that were made to the clinic and to the grinding mill and to the chicken farm and, and the Bible Institute and the dormitories and rebuilding the government school and putting bunk beds and, 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 and bringing in good water instead of going down to the river and having to boil it, put in submersible wells all over the mission so people could have good, clean, drinking water. And so after about a year on the field, Dennis and Sue Anderson felt God's call to go to South Africa, to go to Botswana, to open up new works. And so the Minkoffs stayed with us. It was the Bonners and the Minkoffs. And they stayed with us until the houses were built and there in the bush. And then for over a year after the Minkoffs left, it was Becky and I and the girls, and we were busy. We were planning churches. We were pastor's training course. We were at the Bible Institute. We were running the clinic. We were, you name it, we were doing it, and just about anything and everything along the way. And so then uh, we had a wonderful blessing happen. We had John Sarah, along with his wife, Lorna, came over. They joined us. They began to travel with us. They opened up even more areas of Zambia with us, the evangelization, also going into the Congo and Angola and, and Tanzania and Malawi and other countries. And so Kafulafuta began to be what we call the hub, okay, of the outreach that we were training the nationals, and they were going out of uh, Kafulafuta Bible Baptist Church, training missionaries, training pastors, sending them all over the area and even into other countries. After all my bouts with malaria and blackwater fever and heart attacks, uh, it was time for me to kind of step aside. So I came back to the States and I began International African Missions. And what we did was we partnered to try to get those supplies to what? GCMS, God's Christian Missionary Service. That's the registration that we started many, many years ago. In order to work in that country, as Pastor Mark said, you have to be registered. You've got to be an NGO, a non-government governmental organization. And so our name, we put God's Christian Missionary Service. That was our name. And we had to have a constitution and a board of directors, all of that stuff, and prove every year that we weren't making money, taking money out of the mouths of Zambians. And so a lot of times all the support that I had and John had and whoever was there, we would pull our money and throw it in to operate the mission. And at one time, we had five vehicles going out, four were going out all the time for evangelism all over the country and in different parts, not only to evangelize, but to disciple. And so churches, many, many churches were started. As I traveled around with I Am, going back and forth, as Mark said, uh, I began to raise supplies. I began to raise more Bibles, tracts, medicines, recruiting doctors, recruiting dentists. Matter of fact, came to this church many years ago. Your church here at First Bible took us on many, many years ago. And you had a dentist in this church at that time, Jim Elias. And Jim Elias, I don't know how many dozens of trips he's made since then and the work that he's bringing dentists over to our little health center and teaching the Zambians about dentistry. And I remember some of you here in this room were actually pulling teeth over there. You know, I mean, I kind of never did. I didn't like that stuff, but I'd go around and watch Matt Newton, man. He had a big old smile on his face as he was trying to dig in there, but... I remember when Jim first came over, you know, he came over with Larry Franklin. And I remember Jim Elias, you know, he didn't know we were going. He said when he first, he'd never met me before in his life, and he had just heard of a missionary, Bobby Bonner, ball player in Africa. So he figured I was black, okay? <laughs> so I went to pick him up at the airport in this old mini bus that we had, and, man, it overheated all the time. You go over 50 miles an hour, and the radiator just starts spewing. And so we break down about halfway to the mission in the middle of nowhere, okay? We're broken down, and I said, well, I got to go find water. And Doc Elias had two suitcases. You know what was in those two, two, two suitcases? Nothing but bottled water, 
okay, because he didn't know if he was going to be drinking anything over there. So I remember opening the suitcase, and I said, oh, yeah, and I kept pouring that beautiful water down our radiator and looking at his face. It was kind of funny, but, you know, once, once we got to the mission, everything was okay, and I remember he pulled Catherine's tooth. Catherine Kangabala had a, had a toothache, and he gave her a little shot of Novocaine, and all of a sudden the tooth was out, and she goes, oh, no pain, no pain. So she left. A couple hours later, there's 200 people lined up at our front door to get worked on. So I grabbed the lawn chair and got Becky's salad bowl and a flashlight. And after about four hours of pulling, I don't know how many teeth, 200 teeth, I know Jim was kind of sore and he looked at me and he goes, I paid too much money for my equipment, you know. But anyway, <laughs> but what happened was, see, he was giving them a shot of Novocaine and they weren't feeling it. You see, when you went to a dentist over there, they just basically grabbed a knife or a pair of pliers and went to town. And so to have no pain, man, everybody was lined up. And then, of course, later he shipped over drilling stuff and trained the national. And it's amazing. And I thank God for these people that did that. Amen. For, for Brother Jim and other people. And then, of course, uh, all the churches that began to come over. Think about that. Churches began to come over for evangelism, for church planning crusades, vacation Bible school in the bush, as well as the youth. And let's not forget the deaf ministry. We were still doing the deaf ministry. We're taking in deaf people. We're teaching them, training them. And then Johannes came from, you remember Johannes, he came from Ethiopia, a young man who didn't even want to go in the ministry. But Gomaja, his mother, his adopted mother, stepmother, whatever you want to call her, uh, is his real mother's sister, so anyway, raised him, but his first language was what? Sign language. So as Johannes graduated from North Star Bible Institute and began his work there in Zambia, Africa, what an adventure. And then along came Brian and Tammy and Titus, and especially the transition of John and Lorna going to heaven just over the last couple of years, and now Many of the nationals stepping up, you know, trained and ready to take the step of what? Reaching sub-Sahara Africa with the gospel. I preached a message many years ago at Kafula Futa, one of my last messages at Kafula Futa. And I said that if Zambia is going to be one to Christ, it's going to have to be won by Zambians. If Blue Springs is going to be one to Christ, it's got to be won by people from Blue Springs, by us, Okay? It's got to be won by us. And so if Africa is to be won to the Lord, I believe it must be won by Africans. So it's time for the African to stand up. It's time for the Zambian to stand up and be uncommon. Now let me go back for a few minutes on my arrival, if I can. As soon as I got there, I met a fellow by the name of Senior Chief Mushili, the old senior chief. He's the senior chief of over a million Lamba people. I remember him showing us the mission, walking out in that area where you saw those homes. That, those homes, those buildings weren't there. That was all bush and termite hills. And I remember walking out there and kind of closing my eyes and looking and saying, we're going to have four houses right here. And then right over here, we're going to have the Bible Institute. And right over here, we're going to develop a, some type of chicken farm. And right over here, we're going to build a football pitch. And, and right over there, we're going to have a tabernacle. I remember saying all that and then looked at the chief and he thought I was crazy. But I remember closing my eyes. I remember the pictures that were forming in my mind. I envisioned churches coming to visit short term to help with teaching and showing them what New Testament missions was all about. Once the homes were built, churches, groups of people began to come. An average of three churches a year would come and stay at the mission for anywhere from seven to ten days doing ministry. Many of them were in the medical field. They worked in our rural health centers. Doctors began to come. Surgeons began to come. Many of those who visited returned again and again and again for short term. Kevin Petsky, who's now the pastor of First Bible Baptist Church, he was making six figures for this bank up in New York. I went to Kevin. He was single at the time. I said, can you give me a year of your life? He quit his job. All the money he had 
dad came to Kapula Futa and stayed there a year. Went back, worked another year, made the money, quit again, came back, gave me another year, and then realized God was tugging on his heart, and he came back to Zambia and spent another 10 years in Zambia. And then again, God called him to be the pastor up in Rochester, New York. I think of those days. I think many of the people here at First Bible Baptist Church in Blue Springs, you have experienced Kafula Futa. You've seen the hand of God moving and working in that area. Brian Calloway coming over, you know, when he was headed to Central America and all of a sudden God got a hold of his heart, changed his course of direction. I think of Lana Borden working in our clinic. I think along with Nathaniel as well. The countless others who came over to teach the youth and experience the evangelism, working with the deaf, training teachers. I believe that God has indeed directed and brought this fruit his way for his glory. Using so many of you and so many of the people that have come along. And I say in the Lamba language, Balesa Bachindique, which means to God be the glory for all he's done. I looked, I, you sent me a little note and you said, how many missionaries? I got to thinking, there's been 15 missionary families from the USA were planted in Zambia alone from first coming to Kafula Futa to get a taste of missions. Five more families that came over or have now gone into other countries. There's been another five missionary families who came in from other organizations that we helped to get their registration because we needed the truth in Zambia. Some people became very jealous. I didn't become jealous. I just wanted more people, more people to bring more truth so we could reach more people with the truth because we can't do it alone. We've got to do it together Countless pastors, teachers would come over every year for training, would teach our pastors the constant repairing and maintenance, the remodels, the additions that went on in spite of everything else that was going on, all the building and all the funerals and all the sickness and all everything that was going on. I never knew there was a day off, not when I was at the mission. It was never a day off. There's always something to do. There was always someone knocking on the door. Then there's the preparation of the tabernacle and how the pastors would get together because we had a Bush Bible conference every year in August. Many of you have participated in that. Many of you have seen that. Can you, the most people we ever had in the bush at one of our conferences was a little over 12,000 people. Okay. For eight days. That's when Burhani got saved. He owned a trucking company and he shipped like four of his 40 foot containers up there with truck to go pick up everybody he could think of. You talk about a bus ministry. Man, we were bringing them in, son. Now, we normally average about two or 3,000 people, but that year, 12,000 people. And of course, the health department came in and said, You must build more latrines. Okay, so anyway. And then, of course, everything else with the trucks, how many trucks we've gone through, bicycles, sleeping on the ground, <laughs> preaching and teaching in the bush all day, all night. The safaris we went on. Woo! Man, you want to be chased by elephants? Ride in my car, okay? All right, we got close. I remember I had Mark McGoy, I had Jim Elias, and I forget who the other guy was in the back of my truck. And we're driving along that big old Zambezi River, you know, and you got a 10-foot embankment here, and we're looking for elephants. And I told the guys, they're in the back because they got their cameras, right, you know. I said, now, if we see animals, you know, you know, elephants, you know, let, let me know, let me know. And all of a sudden, they, they hit on the top of the cab, and I looked off to my left, and I see about 30 elephants about 200 yards away walking. I go, yeah, there's elephants, there's elephants. And all of a sudden, I look in my mirror, and all I see is gray. There's a big bull elephant coming out of the water, getting ready to smash into the side of our truck. And they're not even looking at these. They're looking at the bull elephant, just going, staff, 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 staff. And of course, 
I always keep it in first gear ready to go. I popped the clutch and they all fell down, but hallelujah, I didn't lose one. Amen. <laughs> and we just got missed from getting rammed. Oh, the fun we had. Being chased by rhino. Being chased by a hippo. Nothing like it. Amen. And then to be able to stand at the Mosio Tunia. You know, that's Victoria Falls. That's a mile and a half long and 700 foot drop, Zambezi River coming across there. The Mosiotunya means in the native language, the smoke that thunders because the water will go all the way down 700 feet, hit that rock, and the mist will come up hundreds of feet above the river. It looks like a big fog bank. There's just beautiful when the water is full. See, I've always thought of Psalms 19. Two things declare the glory of God. One is creation, amen? But the other is this, the Word of God, the Word of God. And so we would have the Word of God preached for many days, and then I would take the people down and see the animals in their natural habitat. Amen. There's so many nationals to thank. I wish I had the time to go through Mr. Alex Pingula and T.J. Kaunda, the president's son, George Lloyd, Reverend Nkumbwa, Bupe Kambiko, Joseph Mpimba, Senior Chief Mushili, Goodwin Kapalanga, Gutsun Chingumba, Ban Liamba, and the list goes on and on and on. And now men like Pastor Elijah Puli and Pastor Alex Chippy, who have now taken the reins, who have now are involved in God's providential hand upon a place called Kufulafuta, who need a people to fulfill the plan that he has started many, many years ago. And now the work goes on for a group of nationals that have been trained, equipped, tested, tried. And I thank God for their faithfulness. I thank God for those that have the courage to step out of their comfort zone to an uncommon faith. People that have gone from Kafulafuta to the Congo, to Tanzania, to Malawi, to Botswana, to Angola, to Mozambique, and they're still going on because they're men and women of an uncommon faith.